Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I'm Jenny and this is our Houston Smith home. I hope that you watched part one of my video last week. Today is going to be part two, so I'm not going to show you a lot about what we are working on. If you missed that video, I'm going to have it linked down below. So stop right now and go and watch that part one video. It's going to be all the prep work of this dresser that we're working on and today is going to be the fun stuff we're going to paint we're going to be working on the hardware we're going to use the original hardware but we're going to give it an updated look and we're going to be lining the drawers so that's what we got to look forward to today i hope that y'all will stick around and watch the video if you like it make sure and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so let's get started here is a quick reminder of what we are working on this gorgeous dixie brand tall boy dresser Today I'm going to be using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Midnight Blue. This is a gorgeous dark blue color. I already had this. I painted another dresser with it and I had, I think I'm going to have enough left to do this one. I just like to put a little bit of saran wrap under my lid. That makes it a lot easier to open. And today I'm going to be using my favorite paintbrush. This is the Zebra Palm Pro. I love this brush. I want to get some more of these. They are so nice. And then I'm also just going to use a couple of these um, little craft brushes for getting in kind of the smaller spaces and around the edges and stuff like that. Remember last week when we left off, we had primed everything. So now I'm just going to go in with one of these foam sanding pads this i buy these on amazon in a big pack i'll link anything that i'm using in today's video down below so be sure and check that out in the description box i'm just taking that foam pad going over any surface that i'd prime just to knock back any raised spots or anything that might have got caught in that primer and then i'll also go in with a microfiber cloth and wipe back any dust that might have been left behind and you always want to be sure and stir your paint well. I just use a stir stick and stir it up really well. Um, this particular fusion paint to me has a very good consistency. I do notice a little bit in the difference in the colors. Um, this one is nice and thin. Sometimes I will water my paint down just a little bit if it's on the thicker side, but I feel like the consistency of this one is really good. Um, and sometimes I'll just dip straight out of the container, but this one's starting to get a little bit low and I'm going to just pour it into a bowl. I always keep all of my plastic containers. This one I'm pretty sure came from KFC and I just wash them out and use them out here in the shop. As per usual, I thought I was recording myself and I really wasn't. So I just now hit the record and I'm putting on a layer of paint on the drawers. And so here you're just going to see me getting some paint on the drawer first. I'm going to make sure I get paint across the whole drawer. And you have to work pretty fast because this paint does start drying pretty fast. And once I get just a good coat of paint on, then you will see me go back and I'll start on one end and just swap all the way over from one end to the other and just get a good even coverage now once I do that I just leave it alone I'm not going to keep back going back over my brush strokes because that's when you're going to start getting streaks and you're going to start seeing more brush strokes just do that and then leave it alone and then you'll see me going around the edges with my smaller brush I'll just sit each drawer aside as I get it painted and then get move on to the next one and put it up on this table. This saves your back. I used to sit in the floor and paint my drawers and things like that and then by that night I couldn't stand up. So get this stuff up off the floor, get it on your level and that will help your back so much. Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing to the actual body of the chest. So you'll see me kind of going around those smaller trim places. But then once I get my big brush, I will work in whole sections at a time. So you'll see me working on this top section. I'm painting with the grain of the wood top to bottom. And I am going to do the exact same thing like I did on the drawer. Thank you. 
moving on to that bottom section the exact same way painting top to bottom and then I'll just do one good swoop from top to bottom just to make sure and smooth out any brush marks. Once the first coat is done, I'm just putting my lid right on my bowl. This is a good tight fitting lid, good old KFC coming in for the win. <laughs> um, and so I'm just gonna let that sit. It will be perfectly fine. And then I'm gonna wrap my um, brushes up with some plastic wrap. Oh, please take my advice and never buy the Dollar General brand plastic wrap. I did and I'm frugal, so I'm gonna use what I got. I mean, I'm not gonna waste that dollar, you know, but do not buy it, it is terrible. But anyway, just um, any plastic wrap, go ahead and wrap your brushes up and that will keep those fresh in between coats. They won't start, start drying out or anything. Here is a good look after the first coat. You can see what good coverage that Fusion Mineral paint has. Honestly, if I hadn't have primed with the white primer, this would have been just excellent coverage on one coat. I would never just do one coat. I always do at least two coats, but you can just see that white primer through a few of those spots. But other than that, it is just awesome coverage. I'm gonna let this dry for at least two hours, two to four hours. If it's very humid, I give it at least four hours. If it's not, high humidity then two hours will be enough I'm gonna go in with that sand and sponge again this time you'll see me going against the grain so against the way that I painted that will just knock back any brush strokes or any high spots um, for some reason on a couple of these drawer fronts I don't think I got it good on camera but I had a few little drips I'm not real sure how that happened but anything like that that's raised a little bit you can just knock it back otherwise just very lightly sand over this just to make sure everything is good and smooth I always just go in with a dry, clean microfiber cloth and just knock back any of that dust. I see some people do it with a damp cloth, um, so I think you can do either, but I find that just a dry microfiber cloth works fine. Now we are ready for coat number two. So I'm just doing everything exactly the same. Remember we had our paintbrushes wrapped up, so we're just gonna unwrap those. I don't put them in the fridge or anything like that in between coats, just keep them wrapped up out at room temperature and let's get that second coat on. Here you'll see me just raising up the legs on this piece a little bit. I've just got some scrap pieces of wood that I use for this. You can buy things for that, but I just have a couple of little scrap pieces and just raise those feet up a little bit so I can make sure and get um, painted all the way down good on those. And here is what we're looking like after coat number two. It is just such a nice, smooth finish. I love the Fusion Mineral paint. And we are ready for top coat. So for today, I'm going to be using this Verithane uh, water-based polyurethane. I like to use it in the matte finish. You can get it in all different finishes, but that's what I like to use. This is the other brand that I like. It's the General Finishes high performance top coat it's water based as well and i like to use it in the flat but i don't have a whole lot of it so i'm going to use the very thing because that's a brand new can of it i feel like they both work really well i do like to use the general finishes if it's going to be a really high traffic piece like a tabletop or an end table coffee table dining table stuff like that but um, for today, I'm going to use the Vera thing. And I'm just going to apply it with one of these foam brushes. Um, I feel like that's a really good thing to apply it with. But I only use it 
and then throw it away. You know, I don't try to reuse these because you sometimes will get the little black pieces trying to come off. You can even use a regular brush like this. This is the Wooster um, Shortcut, I believe is what it's called. These are really good brushes. You can get those at Home Depot. They used to be $5. I think now they've gone up to like $6 plus, you know, like everything else. But for today, we're just going to use the foam brush. Make sure to give your top coat a really good stir, just like we did the paint. And pretty much I used the exact same technique on my top coat as I did on the paint. So um, one tip I have is just to be really liberal with applying this. You can put quite a bit of product. In my opinion, the less that you put, the more streaks you're going to get. So I like to really get good coverage. I like to make sure I have my piece sitting in the light really well so that I can see. Now, when you put this on, it's going to look very milky. You can already tell it looks very white. Don't worry. This is going to dry completely clear. I'll show you that. But um, it's kind of helpful because it looks so milky when you put it on so you can tell really well where you've had it but yeah be generous with applying it don't worry about you know putting too much but also watch for your drips and things like that you don't want any drips but I'm gonna do this the same I'm gonna get it on there and then I'm gonna just go from side to side and again you need to work pretty fast with this once it starts drying you don't want to mess with it so once you get it on there and do a good swap across from one side to the next then just leave it alone if you have any issues or any streaks or anything like that you'll catch it with the next coat You can see here how milky and white that looks, but I promise you it will dry completely clear and it will be so smooth. Now the Fusion Mineral Paint does have a built-in top coat, so it's not completely necessary to actually add this top coat. It's just whatever you feel comfortable with. These are pieces that I'm doing to sell, so I again want to make sure that I give it the best durability possible. So I do like to go ahead and add an additional top coat. While we're letting that top coat dry, let's go ahead and start working on something else. Let's work on these handles. So I love these original handles. They are so pretty. My customer asked for silver. So we're going to clean these up and see what we can do to get a silver look. I'm just using some Dawn dish soap, some hot water, and a little nylon brush. Just brushing these up really good, cleaning them up. Just laid them all out here on a towel to dry. I'm going to let them sit here and dry. I went ahead and left the left side and the right side separate. And my little labels that I wrote on the back is still intact. So that is good news. And I'm going to let them dry for a little while. I just left those out overnight and let them dry, air dry really good. So this is what I'm going to be using today. This product is called Rub and Buff. I have used this on one other set of handles. I did it in a gold color though. This color is called Pewter. I didn't want anything just bright, bright silver. So I am going to give this a try. I ordered it on Amazon. Again, I'm going to link anything down below that I'm using today. Now I'm just applying this with my finger, but I'm using a glove this time. Last time I just used my finger and I had a mess. So I'm going to try it with the glove, even though the these gloves are a little bit big. I'm just trying to get a uh, small amount and rub it all around. Um, it's almost like a wax and it does dry pretty quickly. So you have to work pretty fast. You can also just use like a small artist brush to get into any little crevices. So you'll see me using that a little bit later as well. And it's turning out very pretty. I'm very pleased with it. I really like the rub and buff. And you can see I've got a little fly friend in this video. So you're going to see him flying around. I've got to get a fly swat for the shop because I don't have one and I have this problem all the time.
Now I got those all done and I let them sit overnight. It's been around 24 hours and now I'm just going to take a soft cloth and I'm going to do the buff part. I'm just going to, uh, you could use like a microfiber cloth. I'm just using a blue shop towel. Any, any lint free cloth will be fine. You'll feel that these are dry um, and I'm just going to kind of shine it up. You just rub that cloth over and just shines up the area and if you've got any like rough spots or anything like that, it'll smooth those out. I should note that I did add a second coat of the uh, polyurethane onto the drawer facings and the very top of the cabinet. Now I'm just going ahead and putting all of the hardware back on. Remember that I had labeled my hardware. Like I said, I've just found that stuff goes back a lot easier where it came from. So if you remember from my first video, I did label all of the hardware, left side, right side, and which drawer it belongs to. So that's just made it so much easier to get everything put back on quickly and easily. Now it's just time for some finishing touches. I love to line drawers. These drawers are in amazing shape, so it's not necessary, but I think it's very pretty and it just adds a finishing touch. I like to buy the peel and stick wallpaper from Amazon. I've got several linked on my like to know it account. Um, and I just thought this one was perfect for the blue dresser. Remember, I've already cleaned the drawers really well in my first video, but I am just going to take my Dyson um, vac and just go through and make sure there's not any dust or anything like that in the drawers. You want to make sure it sticks really well. I'm just measuring my drawers. I like to cut my liner just a little bit bigger than the drawer measures and that gives me a little bit of excess to cut off um, a little bit easier to work with now i'm gonna say this is the widest drawer that i have ever done so this might be comical me trying to video this and show y'all how i do it and you will say i end up asking for help so don't be afraid to ask for help sometimes you need four hands instead of two sometimes that makes it a lot easier so i'm just measuring here i'm going to cut it to size and then you will see us install the liner I'll just show you the good, the bad, and the ugly here on installing this drawer liner. This is the first drawer, and I started with drawer number one on top. I'm going to go ahead and suggest you start with drawer number five or six or whatever your last drawer is. That way, by the time you get to the top, it is going to be looking perfect. I've lined several drawers, and again, this is the widest one I've ever tried to do, and so it's just hard sometimes, but you will find your best technique and you will find what works best for you and so like i said by the time you get to the top you're going to be looking pretty good but anyway i'm just going to show you all of my little um trials here and error and um you can just enjoy the show Now, I know you can actually buy a tool for this, but I'm using the good old Sky Zone gift card. You could use a credit card, any nice flat surface like that, and just smooth out any air bubbles. Make sure you've got everything smooth. Really push it into the edges to get yourself a nice line because you'll see in a minute we're going to go back in and cut off the excess. You need a good, sharp razor blade for this part. I'm just using a box cutter here. I actually need to buy some razor refills, but for today, I'm just having to use what I have. But 
the sharper the better and you'll just go right around the edges and cut off any excess that you have. Then just take your card or your tool, whatever you're using, and smooth around those edges really good. Make sure everything is um, just mashed down in place very well. Not perfect. So you'll see a few little gaps here and there. Like I said, if my razor was a little sharper, I think that would be better. But overall, I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks great. And then the more drawers you do, the better it will look. So I put the drawers in and I noticed along the edges, I could still see a little bit of wood. So I'm just using this small craft brush and I'm going down those edges. I'm just freehanding this. If you remember, I think I had some tape here, but I just didn't tape back far enough and you could still see a little bit of wood when I put the drawers in. So I'm just freehanding this and getting a coat of blue on a little bit further back down the edges. Here is the final look. I think this dresser turned out so, so pretty. I love the midnight blue color. I think the silver handles just complement it so well. I love the liner. All those little details and little finishing touches to me are so important. I hope that you learned something today. Maybe you learned something about painting furniture. If you do have any further questions, be sure and leave them in the comments and I will be sure and answer those for you. It's hard to capture everything in a video. I'm learning that. But if you have any questions about what I did with this be sure and leave them in the comments here's a, a better look at those handles with the rub and buff and then there is that gorgeous liner and it just all ties in together so pretty but I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you will come back next week I do upload a new video every week so y'all come back and see what we have going on next week and we'll see you then bye